When we moved from the city to the suburbs many years ago, I worried a lot about everything. How we'd afford all the furniture we needed. How my son would adjust to preschool and becoming a big brother. If we'd ever find strong enough duct tape to keep our refrigerator in one piece. And whether the weird sounds coming from the basement meant that our boiler was just about to explode. And then, a few years later, we discovered our underground oil tank was leaking. Definitely something new to worry about. It'll have to come out, the serviceman told me. OK, I agreed, not eager to cause an environmental disaster. But you'll uh, have to remove that tree first. That tree, I said, pointing to the only tree outside in our front yard. <laughs> yep, that one, the tank's directly under it. No, I said, instantly resistant. Not that tree. That's my children's favorite tree. That tree goes with the house. The tree was part of the house, part of our family. It was a thick-trunked, glowy red maple that was perfect for climbing. My two-year-old monkey daughter had already figured out how to pull herself up and swing from it, while my more cautious son trusted it and moved along its branches like a steely mountain climber. The tree was their playground, their castle, their friend. It provided each of them what they needed. You know the dreams people have of their kids' carefree childhoods? Well, this tree was in every one of mine. As I showed the serviceman to the door, the only thought in my head was, we can't lose this tree. My husband was sad too, but made an appointment right away for the tank to be removed, and over the next few days attempted to soothe me in the same conversation. We can plant a tree in that exact spot, any kind of tree you want. I ended each of those conversations the same way. I don't want another tree. I needed a second opinion and sought the advice of a tree company. And as it turns out, I also needed a third, a fourth, and even a fifth opinion. <laughs> One after the other, they told me the same thing. The tree would never survive. Such a shame. What a beauty, they all concurred, as if somehow that would lessen the blow. It wasn't that I didn't trust their judgment. All the reasons they gave were good ones, grounded in physics and science, but not even the best one could contend with the voice inside my head that was screaming, don't chop it down. But I was alone. My family and friends felt I'd gone too far and urged me to let go. <laughs> it's just a tree, they kept saying. You're making yourself crazy. It could be so much worse. Of course, I knew it could be worse. And yes, I was making myself crazy. But that's because it wasn't just a tree, at least not to my kids, which is why I had to believe it could survive. So I didn't let go and finally found a company called Save a Tree. <laughs> Their name guaranteed a different answer. <laughs> Yet when the woman came and surveyed the situation, shook her head and said, I'm sorry, my heart sank. What do you do when save a tree can't save your tree? <laughs> well, you call the oil tank removal company and ask to speak to the manager. At least that's what I did. It was Tuesday. The tank was scheduled to come out on Monday. I had almost no time left. I begged the manager to send someone. Please, I said, this is important. Days ticked by, no one came. Finally, at 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon, a man showed up at my door. Not exactly a knight in shining armor. He was old. His hand shook with a pronounced tremor, and he smelled like oil and cigarettes. The man went down to the basement. He studied the pipes. He studied the tree. And then he studied my face. He was quiet just long enough for me to despair. Then he said, don't chop it down. Don't chop it down, I said back at him as if he hadn't heard himself. I can't guarantee anything, he said, but we'll try. Call the office and tell them to put Joe on the job. Make sure you ask for Joe. Joe, I said to myself. Joe, OK, now everything is riding on Joe. <laughs> I tried to contain my emotions when I greeted Joe on Monday morning, but had tears in my eyes as he and his men brought out an enormous backhoe. Through the dusty haze, my kids and I sat on our front steps and watched every move he made. My daughter bounced on my lap with innocent excitement. 
But my son, more aware of what was at stake, kept his eyes on my face, watching every twitch and twinge while asking me the same question I was asking myself. Is the tree going to be OK, Mommy? Are they saving it? They worked for hours, digging a huge grave-sized hole next to the tree. Occasionally, Joe looked my way. I tried to smile and appear calm. It's not how I felt. My daughter's nap came and went. Then the machine stopped. Joe stopped. I stopped. <laughs> I walked over to him, barely able to breathe. You can't do it, I asked, my voice cracking. No, lady, we're just getting started. That's when Joe and his crew grabbed themselves some shovels, marched on down to the ground, and at least three more hours dug that tank out from under the tree. And at the end of their efforts, there stood the tree on a small island of dirt, not even wobbling. The future looked bright for my kids and their tree. I either hugged Joe or kissed him or both, and that's when I noticed right then that he looked a lot like Paul Newman. <laughs> Joe smiled. He looked relieved. You pulled my heartstrings, lady. What else could I do? You did it, mommy, my son exclaimed, and then added, you'll be OK now. You'll stop crying? <laughs> Others might have thought I was teetering precariously on the edge, had lost all perspective, and was being overly sentimental. But my kids didn't see any of that. All they saw was their mom fighting to save their tree because she loved it and didn't want to lose it. Crazy or not, they knew it was worth fighting for. My kids are much older now, old enough to fight their own battles. But they know if it's not about them, I'm bound to be worried about something. So every early spring, when they catch me checking to see if the small buds are forming on the tree, they say, Mom, relax. It's OK. The tree is fine. And it is. <laughs>